What's up everyone? Alex here. Vanillaware is a developer best known for their incredible 2D work and signature action gameplay. So when their latest game was announced and revealed to be a tactical turn-based strategy game, many fans gave pause. But should fans really be worried? Join me as we dive right into Vanillaware's latest magnum opus, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, and uncover the answers to these questions ourselves. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is a science fiction themed game with gameplay that takes inspiration from various adventure and strategy game genres developed by Vanillaware and published by Atlas, who provided this review code. At an unspecified point in time, 13 Sentinels are activated to protect a city from the threat of Kaiju invasion. But what really happened that led to this point? From here, 13 Sentinels will take you on an adventure that spans vast distances in time, uncovering mysteries and intrigue that will constantly make you question what's really happening, who you can trust, and how to even stand a sliver of a chance against the incoming kaiju threat. Since its release in Japan, many people, including myself, have likened 13 Sentinels combat to tower defense games. However, simply labeling it as such fails to truly capture its essence. It is true that its battles feature waves of kaiju trying to reach and destroy a terminal on each map. However, that's where its similarities with that genre ends. In fact, 13 Sentinels wants you to be an active participant in its battles, requiring you to command and coordinate each Sentinel's next moves. Thankfully, you won't have to make these decisions in real time, as the game will pause the action while you decide what to do. There are four different commands you can issue, and your choice will determine when that sentinel will become available next. For example, using Yuri's arm-mounted machine cannons will fire said weapon and render her unavailable for 7 seconds. Otherwise, as long as a sentinel is available and not waiting for their turn, you can issue commands at your own leisure. This then allows for opportunities where players can set up damaging combo attacks that can obliterate massive swarms of kaiju, and the satisfaction you experience by executing these maneuvers reminds me of the feeling you get when watching a perfectly timed Rube Goldberg machine run from start to finish. And much like Vanillaware's action games, 13 Sentinels keeps track of these combo kills and rewards you based on your longest combo streak. Perhaps the biggest contributor to 13 Sentinels combat feeling more epic and visceral is due to its powerful arsenal of weapons. You'll both be able to unlock and upgrade these weapons thanks to the meta chips you collect at the end of each story section, as well as at the end of each battle. Unlike commanding units in other tactical games, the Sentinels' attack ranges are massive and covers a lot more ground, so much of the strategy you'll be employing has more to do with utilizing your abilities to deal the most amount of damage to the most amount of kaiju as possible. While battles mostly ask you to protect a single point on the map, this doesn't automatically mean that going on the offensive isn't an option. In fact, if you choose to go on the offensive and defeat all the kaiju on the field, you'll be able to clear your missions faster. That said, 13 Sentinels allows you to take on its battles however way you want, and with a diverse weapon arsenal, you might even find planning and plotting your targets enjoyable and fun. In my Japanese demo impressions video, I questioned the choice of using 2D sprites to represent Sentinels and kaiju on screen. But as I advanced through the game's early skirmishes, I realized that this was the most reasonable alternative to represent its battles in the most coherent way possible. This stylistic choice allows Vanillaware to populate the map with hundreds of kaiju, towing the line between depicting what pilots see through the Sentinel's user interface and representing the real-time action happening on the field. It's also because of this that 13 Sentinel's battles feel massively epic and grand, managing to evoke feelings of danger and panic at times, despite your foe's minimalist presentation. However, this doesn't mean that 13 Sentinels maps skimp on detail, as you'll not only see buildings and landmarks pop up the moment they're centered on screen, but you'll also see small animations of your Sentinels' abilities when you linger on your selection. Any other developer would likely see these as superfluous or unnecessary, but Vanillaware is the kind of company that spends a considerable amount of time matching the beauty of its aesthetics with the intent behind their gameplay, with 13 Sentinels demonstrating that their choice to change genres involved a meticulous process that considered almost everything behind the player experience. 
I say almost because I feel that they made one misstep. And that is, during command selection, the minimap moves to the center of the screen, which, due to its translucent display, has details that can easily be obscured by the visuals on the field. Other games such as Persona 5 and Yakuza Like a Dragon demonstrated that with the right combination of visuals and sound design that you can make something as seemingly rudimentary as a turn-based game feel more action-packed than what's actually happening on screen. 13 Sentinel's strong sound design definitely makes up for its lack of detailed models, with every weapon blast and explosion packing a powerful aura punch. Combining these with its visuals create a euphoric feeling similar to that of hearing and seeing popcorn kernels pop, which makes the simple task of defeating Kaiju a more satisfying experience than one might think. Completing 13 Sentinel's audiovisual package is a soundtrack composed by the folks at Bass Escape, employing a contrasting mix of synths and strings against hard electronic beats, depicting the battle between the humans and the invading Kaiju just through its music alone. These electronic beats sound rough, metallic, and jagged, subconsciously building up your internal feelings about the incoming kaiju threat as the battle progresses. Truthfully, I wasn't expecting to enjoy 13 Sentinel's battle gameplay coming into it based purely on what I played of the Japanese demo. However, I can definitely say that as someone who generally doesn't like tactical games, I absolutely loved and enjoyed it. In many ways, 13 Sentinel's combat reminds me of battles in earlier Final Fantasies, where the action on the field continuously happens until a party member gets their turn and selects from a list of spells, which then pauses all action. And yet this one comparison, much like the many comparisons drawn prior, doesn't fully speak of the kinds of feelings of excitement and satisfaction you'll experience by defeating the waves of kaiju that are trying to take you down. It's very rare for any developer to be able to nail a game's feel on a consistent basis, but Vanillaware makes it look effortless every single time. Doubly so with 13 Sentinels. Much like how labeling its battles as tower defense doesn't completely describe its combat, likening 13 Sentinels' story gameplay to visual novels is just as big of a misrepresentation. It is true that you're able to fast forward and skip conversations that you've already had, as well as look at a visual representation of the progression of its story. But again, that's where its similarities end. In actuality, 13 Sentinel's story gameplay takes inspiration from many other story-based game genres, with its developers even going so far as to examine gameplay from classic point-and-click adventure games. One innovation that 13 Sentinels brings to the table is the Thought Cloud, which not only contains potential topics of conversation, but inventory items as well. Each time a character has something to say about one of the topics in your Thought Cloud, a prompt will appear on their heads when you're nearby, signaling that you should be opening up the interface and finding the topic, or topics, to present to them. Thankfully, the topic in question will always visually draw a line between itself and the person you're talking to when highlighted. These required topics are also represented as a separate UI element on the top right corner of the screen, with red blocks representing the number of topics you need to present in order to advance. Being able to visibly know what and how many topics are needed to push the story forward helps alleviate the tedium of testing out various dialogue options just to find the correct ones. This streamlining of various adventure game systems is also extended with how you interact with its environment. One of the most exhausting parts of point-and-click adventure games involves pixel hunting, which describes having to move a cursor across the entire screen just to find what objects can be interacted with. 13 Sentinels doesn't have that many interactable objects on screen, opting for the players to focus on its narrative and developing its world primarily through its dialogue. 13 Sentinels' story is presented in the signature 2D style that Vanillaware has been known for, and this time around, there's even a tiny bit of 3D thrown into the mix. Unlike previous games, Vanillaware has chosen a color palette that's more muted, reflecting a feeling of hopelessness that sometimes peeks through the game's narrative. Hopeful splashes of vibrance cuts through these muted tones, in the form of a newly engineered lighting system that enhances its 2D artwork's dimensionality, demonstrated by casting edge lighting onto its characters, as well as dramatically lighting locations. 
13 Sentinels takes advantage of the higher fidelity of the PS4, as every single texture, piece of artwork, and detail are crisper and sharper even compared to their recent works in Odin Sphere Leithrazir and Dragon's Crown Pro. Perhaps more impressive is the ability of this presentation to deliver interesting and entertaining ways to tell its story without shifting its perspective one iota, leveraging the best parts of its 2D design to the utmost, demonstrating why Vanillaware are the kings of 2D in games. The entirety of 13 Sentinels features voice acting, though I was only able to experience the game with Japanese voiceovers, as the English voice track will be launching on day one alongside its release. Thankfully, based off of the recently released trailer, the English voice acting seems to be on par with the publisher's other voice work, which is a level of quality that Atlas has been able to deliver on a consistent basis. Unlike the heavy electronic beats heard in 13 Sentinels Battles, the composers at Base Escape have created a soundtrack for its story gameplay that contrasts heavily with the former's thematics, while at the same time managing to somehow feel as though they all belong to the same soundtrack. The compositions heard throughout 13 Sentinel story gameplay feature more natural instruments, with a small tinge of electronica that hints at the struggles to come. There's a wider diversity of compositions found here, evocative of its protagonists' everyday lives, as well as the mystery surrounding the unfolding events. When you consider their work on the entirety of 13 Sentinel's tracklist, it's easy to come to the conclusion that it's the richest, most diverse soundtrack Base Escape has ever written one that's only enhanced by everything else that the game does right. When I first made my Japanese demo impressions video, I made a conscious effort to omit any mention of time travel in 13 Sentinels, thinking that it was going to be a major plot point in the story. Looking back at what I played, this one seemingly minor detail pales in comparison to the kinds of revelations, half-truths, and mysteries hidden deep within its narrative. 13 Sentinel's story spans 13 different protagonists, who each have their own conflicting personal motivations that will somehow embroil them on a mission to destroy the incoming kaiju threat. This is the second time Vanillaware has attempted in creating a deep, intertwining multi-character narrative, with their first being the action RPG, Odin Sphere. What's poetic about 13 Sentinel's story is that, much like how its battles and adventure gameplay were inspired by many others in their respective genres, so too does its narrative. And yet, with the many science fiction tropes its story throws into the blend, their integration to the overall plot is nothing short of impressive. With so many tropes present, it's easy to think that 13 Sentinel's story easily starts bordering on the absurd. And yet, the game's narrative has a sense of commanding authority that demands you to pay attention to its many reveals. 13 Sentinels doles out its mysteries and revelations in such a convincing way that you can't help but find yourself willing and eager to accept said truths and keep playing, just to find out what else is to come. Other mystery stories tend to keep building more and more questions as their tales reach their climax, but 13 Sentinels leaves you with enough breadcrumb trails to follow that they're able to pay some of these off early with its reveals while building its narrative atop this newfound information. At every turn, 13 Sentinels will surprise you, often making you question your understanding of what's really going on, and it's a thrilling ride for anyone who's huge into science fiction. For the rest of us, the mysteries involving the many elements of its story will be more than enough to keep us glued to the game for hours on end. 13 Sentinels might seem like just another science fiction fantasy, but there's oh so much more to it than meets the eye. I credit my enjoyment of its narrative to the fantastic localization team at Atlas, who I'd like to acknowledge specifically for this title. Localizing a story filled with tons of secrets and mysteries is difficult enough, but to have to work with the unique nature of the Japanese language and trying to capture that same nuance in English is a feat that I absolutely do not comprehend and understand. And yet, with every piece of text, every line of dialogue, 13 Sentinels manages to not only coherently tell an engaging and thrilling story, but also manages to infuse a uniqueness of character upon its huge cast. There have been times that have been able to quickly identify the speaker just by their word choice and manner of speaking alone, and that speaks volumes to the meticulous work that Atlas put into the game's script.
perhaps one of the smartest things 13 Sentinels does is that it allows you to dictate the pace of how you engage with its story and battles. Sometime after completing its prologue, stories and battles are split between two menu items, Remembrance and Destruction, respectively. Playing battles and destruction back-to-back -back will yield chain bonuses that grant you higher score totals, rewarding you with mystery points to use elsewhere in the game. However, utilizing the same sentinels in consecutive battles will eventually cause them to become unavailable for one battle, which is the price you have to pay for playing consecutive rounds. By equipping sentinels with a wide range of weaponry and ensuring that you carefully select which units to take in battle, you'll be able to mitigate these disadvantages, though you might have to balance your team composition based on certain bonus objectives that may require you to have specific sentinels present. Alternatively, you can always choose to restore your sentinel's availability at the cost of losing your score bonuses, ultimately resetting your score multiplier. Perhaps the best part about these chain bonuses is that these will still be retained should you wish to take a break and experience the stories in remembrance. Because you have full control over the pace of how the story unfolds, you'll eventually come across locks that will prevent you from getting too far ahead in its story. These locks vary in their requirements, with some requiring you to get a certain number of protagonists past a certain percentage of the story, or an entire set of battles locked behind a specific character's story progression. I can't even fathom how Vanillaware was able to coordinate its storytelling in such a way that these progression locks make sense. And yet, sure enough, 13 Sentinels is able to continue to dole out huge revelations left and right while still managing to control how its story should unfold. This can only be the result of a combined effort between its writer and the game's principal designers, and I applaud their audacity to not only allow us to be able to experience the game our own way, but to be able to get certain parts of the story in a way that isn't obtrusive to our own experiences. Though I'd imagine that you'll eventually come to a point where trying to remember every single term or event that happens becomes a daunting task. That's where the third menu item, Analysis, comes in. Analysis contains an expansive glossary called Mystery Files, as well as a complete event history of every single story event you've seen. Mystery Files contains exhaustive information that constantly changes depending on how much of the story you've experienced, and with the ability to unlock certain mystery files tied to your performance in Destruction, you're always encouraged to keep checking in to read these new entries. Optionally, you'll also be able to use the mystery points you gained in Destruction to unlock additional entries. While event history may look like a straightforward timeline of events, I want to mention that this too is an iteration of the work Vanillaware has done before, specifically on Odin Sphere. That game featured multiple timelines based on the five playable characters, which made it confusing to try and piece together the events as they unfolded. The decision to collapse multiple storylines into one large event history is a result of iterating and learning from this initial concept, and it makes understanding the various events in 13 Sentinels a whole lot easier. Seeing the game split between different menu items might be a bit puzzling at first, but if you look at them as different ways you can engage with the game depending on what you want to do, you'll find that 13 Sentinels is very accommodating. It's through this representation that Vanillaware wants you to know that they didn't just make one game, but in fact, two very distinct games inspired by their respective genres, infusing them into a single game that seamlessly blends both experiences. And despite the magnitude of this effort, I'm happy to say that after playing 13 Sentinels for close to 50 hours from start to finish, I could definitely feel that Vanillaware's meticulous attention to detail and passion for gameplay is very much present in every facet of my experience, showing a deep appreciation and respect for the audience it wants to attract and retain. While the shift in genre might have been a concern for many fans, including myself, I still had hopes that beyond the demo I played, that the magic Vanillaware infuses in their games would still be present. And now that I've played through the entirety of 13 Sentinels' Aegis Rim, I'm happy to confirm that it is absolutely there, in so many more ways than in any other previous efforts before. 13 Sentinels demonstrates a maturation of Vanillaware's aesthetic and gameplay design that they could only show in this manner, displaying a mastery of their craft that they've constantly improved upon and iterated. Add to that a brilliant narrative design with a story that was years in the making, and it's safe to say that any bets Vanillaware made were absolutely worth taking. 
13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is easily the most ambitious vanillaware game of their entire history, and it's hands down one of the most satisfying experiences I've had with games in this generation.